Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going over the topic of IFR flight planning. IFR flight planning is very similar to VFR flight planning with a few additional twists. Um, weather in particular is a very important factor, uh, even more so than VFR flying. Um, so we really need to go kind of deeper in terms of uh, understanding of the weather uh, at the departure in destination airports and along the route. Uh, during the time frame that we anticipate flying, we need to think about putting alternate airports in um, as a, a backup in the event the weather is not going to be sufficient enough to fly the approaches into our depart uh, arrival airport. Um, we also need to look at preferred routes. We want to also take a look at SIDS. Um, we want to take a look at STARS. Um, and we want to look at the approaches that we can anticipate um, flying, having to fly at our uh, destination airports. So we're going to go over all those topics today and common errors that happen with uh, IFR flight planning. And uh, hopefully you'll find this uh, useful. And if you do, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video. All right, today we're going to go over the steps required to do a proper IFR flight plan. So we're going to go over just top level what are the required tasks that we need to do as part of our IFR flight planning. Number one, we need to determine what airport we're going to. What's our destination airport? Uh, then we want to see if there are any ATC preferred routes between the departure and destination airports. And in regards to the preferred routes, we need to know whether or not we've got um, just uh, slant uniform or VOR ILS capabilities, or we also have GPS uh, capability in an aircraft. Uh, the plane will be flying uh, for this flight. It does have GPS and VOR capability into it. Um, we're also going to want to check if there are any SIDs or STARS that we need to be aware of um, for the intended airports. Uh, we want to review any weather conditions and forecast information as at, both at the departure and destination airports and along the entire route of flight. And we want to back that up with a legal weather briefing using something like 1-800-WX-BRIEF. We're going to want to complete a weight and balance calculation. We're going to also want to review in detail the airport runways and taxiways of intended use. And we're going to want to fill out an IFR flight plan form and then file that flight plan. And lastly, we want to review any of the common flight planning areas that we may um, accidentally do as part of this whole flight planning process. So determining what air airport uh, destination we have in mind, uh, in this case, we're going to fly from Laconia, New Hampshire, KLCI to Bradley International Airport, Bravo Delta Lima. Um, next, we want to look at our ATC preferred routes between the airports. Again, we're going to be flying from Laconia to Bradley International Airport, um, and we're going to wind up selecting a route um, that is preferred or more currently or more recently been um, provided by ATC for other people that have been flying that route. Um, there are seven preferred routes uh, that I've seen in the particular um, plan that I put together to fly from Laconia to Bradley. And we've, I've selected the departure airport again being Laconia, the route being the Concord VOR, uh, the T295 route to Molds intersection to T300 to Nelly, and then finally the destination airport, the Bradley International Airport. Here I am in four flight, and I'm selecting the flight that I've already saved to show you the route that I filed for the trip to Bradley International Airport. As you can see in the flight plan view, I have the route bookended, if you will, by the departure airport, Laconia Airport, and the destination airport, Bradley Airport. With the particular flight I'm planning, it's assuming that we're using Global Positioning System, or GPS, and VOR navigation. However, if you're uh, flying in an IFR aircraft that's a slant uniform, only VOR navigation capable, if you're trying to plan out your own route, make sure the distance between um, VORs doesn't exceed um, 80 nautical miles. And the reason for that is, the type of um, VORs that are typically being deployed here have a range of about 40 nautical miles. If you look here, uh, this is your uh, VOR types, the terminal, low and route, and high altitude. And for low altitude in, uh, flying that we're typically doing, less than 18,000 feet, but even for some of the high altitude VORs um, below 14,500 feet, they have a range of about 40 nautical miles. So you don't want to um, have distances greater than 80 nautical miles between VORs that you're trying to uh, fly along these Victor Airways, um, because if you go beyond that, you can't be guaranteed the reception. 
And if you look here, they've got the top number here is your MEA, um, minimum en route altitude. And this guarantees not only obstacle clearance, but radio reception between um, the two uh, VORs. Uh, the number here with the star is your uh, MOCA, and that only guarantees reception for the first 22 nautical miles away from the VOR. Um, we also want to make sure we review any SIDs or STARs at the intended airports. Uh, KLCI has no SIDs, um, but they do have an obstacle departure procedure, and that we're, re we're required to fly. Um, if an airport has an ODP, uh, you must fly it as part of your um, IFR uh, flight plan. And in here we see at Laconia Airport um, that we have, let me turn my laser pointer on here. We have departure procedures, runway eight climb to 2,500 via heading 079 um, on the Kenny Bunk VOR, radial 315. And you're gonna go inbound to that to 3,500 feet before proceeding on course. If you're taking off runway 26, uh, we're gonna climb to 2640, uh, climbing heading to 2640 to 2,500 feet before proceeding on course. So I definitely wanna fly that out of Laconia, one of those two. Uh, next, we want to look at the stars. Um, there's a Deep Park 3 star, and there's a Stella 1 star. And we should take a look at those. Now, that said, um, a couple things about that. Both with these SIDs and stars, if you feel uncomfortable um, flying a SID or a star, you can put on your flight plan no SIDs or stars. ATC would prefer you to be knowledgeable and capable of flying uh, any one of those, but you don't have to. The ODP, you have to fly. But, but if there's SIDS or STARS, um, it's recommended you do, but you don't have to. So it's important to take a few minutes and um, kind of brief yourself on the SIDS and STARS that are associated with your trip. And so here at Deep Park 3 and Stella 1, we want to take a look at those for a couple minutes to make sure we have some basic understanding in case we get asked to fly them if we did not put no SIDS or STARS on our flight plan. So yeah, so again, we should expect to fly one of them unless we state no SIDS or STARS on the IFR flight plan. Next, we want to do a deep weather um, briefing uh, for both the departure and destination airports and along the entire route of flight. Uh, for a top level, you know, you can review the departure destination airports, METARs, and TAFs. Uh, you can get them from aviationweathercenter.gov, off of ForeFlight, uh, and, and numerous other tools. Um, along the route of flight, you're going to want to um, look at other METARs and TAFs at airports along the route of flight. Um, you're going to want to review any PIREPs that might have um, be filed along that route of flight. And then with aviationweather.gov's website, you're going to want to take a deep look at the weather radar for any um, um, weather, rain, storms, thunderstorms that may be uh, cropping up along that route of flight during your, your planned trip. You're going to look at air mets and sig mets and convective sig mets. You're going to look at the surface analysis, the prog charts. Icing layers um, associated with the altitude you expect to fly. Uh, winds and temperatures aloft. And you might also want to look at the lift and index chart to determine if there's any potential for vertical lift and the threat of potential thunderstorms showing up um, during your flight. And lastly, you want to call and obtain a legal weather briefing. This is the type of briefing that you know basically is recorded on file and shows that you did due diligence uh, for that cross-country flight planning. Next, you want to make sure you do a weight and balance calculation. Um, basically, you need the basic empty aircraft weight, the pilot and front passenger, any half passengers, baggage, and fuel. And you're going to either calculate this by hand um, or you're going to use a tool like ForeFlight to make sure that your takeoff and, and your landing weights are um, and the, and the associated center gravities are within the envelope uh, of the aircraft. Um, calculating these by hands, it's basically taking item weights, multiplying times station moment arms, summing up all those moments that you come up with, and divided by the uh, total weight of the aircraft with all of its um, occupants and fuel. And then once we divide the um, moments by the weights, we have our CG and we plot it. We want to really do it for both the takeoff weight and the landing weight. And as long as your aircraft's within the limits uh, envelope, you're, you're safe to fly them. We also want to take a deep dive look at the runways and taxiways of intended use. 
Make sure to review key items at each airport, like the field elevation and, and um, runway uh, lengths and widths, the airport lighting, uh, runway lengths, as I already said, uh, displacement thresholds, uh, taxiways, and hotspots. Also, make sure you look at all the radio frequencies and, and make note of them, particularly your, your weather-related ones, your ATIS, AWOS, or ASOS, uh, the tower, CTAF, Unicom frequencies, and any approach departure frequencies that you may need to pick up or expect to be on um, as you come into your arrival area. And then lastly, look at any air, um, airport remarks uh, in terms of services, tower operation, things like that. Next, you want to um, fill out and file an IFR flight plan. So use the ICOA International Flight Plan form. Um, if you're doing it by paper, you can print one of these out and fill it out and then submit it uh, through 1-800-WXBrief.com through a flight service uh, station. Um, or you can go online and you can go to 1-800-WXBrief.com and do the online uh, flight service version. Uh, this is a really cool free tool uh, to file VFR and IFR flight plans. Um, in addition, of course, you can use ForeFlight and other EFB tools uh, to file your flight plan, um, or I should say enter your flight plan and file it. Uh, make sure your route information doesn't include the destination airport. Okay, so when you're uh, uh, filing one of these flight plans, you have your departure airport and your destination airport, but your route section should basically be where you're getting on and off the, um, the, the route to your destination airport. Also, you want to keep in mind that you may need to file an alternate airport. And if you remember the 321 rule, three, um, three statue miles of visibility, 2,000 feet ceilings, in plus or minus one hour from your expected time of arrival, if you don't have those types of um, um, ceilings and visibility, then you're going to need to file an alternate. And you got to be mindful of the required fuel reserves. Make sure to include um, any contact information so that you can be contacted to check on your status and to close out your flight plan in the event you forgot to do so. Um, for your altitude input, you want to always want to enter your initial altitude that you plan to fly on the departure uh, of the trip. So here I am in 1-800-WXBrief.com's website, and I'm logged in. And if I go to uh, plan and brief, uh, I'm going to bring up their tool for uh, filling out an, uh, a flight plan and actually going ahead and, and filing if I wanted to. So I can drop down here, I can select um, particular flights that I wanted to, um, that, I've, that were favorites of mine. I'll put the KLCI to KBDL in, and it preloads it uh, with my aircraft. Um, I can select IFR, VFR flight plan, general aviation, one aircraft, it's a PA-28, low wake turbulence. The type of equipment I can select that I have VOR, DME, uh, GNSS, or GPS on it. Uh, <clears throat> I can select the... Um, departure airport. I can get an area brief for it. I can put my departure date and time, uh, the cruising speed, uh, true air speed, my altitude I plan to initially fly at, surveillance equipment here. I can put that in. Um, I can then do my route of flight. I could uh, take a map and look at the map view or plan view. Um, I can then put the destination airport in. Uh, the amount of time I can have it calculate the amount of type to fly between the airports uh, along this route. Um, it worked out to one hour and 12 minutes in this case. Uh, weather conditions for this IFR flight were going to be such that it would need to add an IFR flight plan. My fuel endurance, the people on board, the color and make of the aircraft. I made a comment here, no SIDS or STARS in the remark section. And um, if I had an emergency um, gear, radios, equipment on, I would select that. And then I would file the flight plan. Just simply go here and hit the file. And then finally, review of common errors. So once you put this flight plan together, you just want to make sure that you haven't missed anything. Make sure, number one, all your charts are up to date. Low and route charts, approach plates, chart supplements. Um, if you're using ForeFlight, make sure you've downloaded the recent charts. If you're using paper charts, make sure they're current. Do not have in your aircraft uh, non-current charts. Uh, that could get you trouble uh, in your flight. Um, also, it could get you trouble on a ramp check if you were caught with uh, out-of-date out charts in your plane. Again, did you get a legal weather briefing? Not just check the METAR TAF and, and, and call it a day, that you've actually called and got a um, brief 
from a weather briefer or that you use the Four Flights briefing tool or other uh, EFB legal uh, briefing tool to get a full, complete understanding of what your environment's going to be weather-wise. Uh, did you review the airport charts of intended use? And airport's a long route. So not only do you want to make sure that you know um, the airport's uh, runway and taxiway lengths and things like that at both your uh, departure and destination, but you also want to be aware of any airports along your route that might be able to divert to if weather gets bad or you have some type of mechanical issue. Again, did you review the SIDS or STARS that you may be asked to fly? Um, did you ensure you have a 45-minute reserve minimum after worst case having to fly to your intended airport and then fly to the alternate airport and then fly approaches at both with maybe even a hold at each and still have that 45-minute reserve? Uh, I typically like to have a minimum one-hour reserve when I'm going on any type of IFR flight. And did you check your weather brief, uh, your we your um, weight and balance calculation? Important that you you know got a full good and under understanding and appreciation of what you got for numbers there. And lastly, did you file your flight plan? So those are the steps and common errors associated with IFR flight planning. Hopefully, you found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video.